I ended up being able to seat this um, transformer by putting a washer in at the screw. Uh, the problem was not the case, but the screw right at the base of the screws. Eventually they wear down if there's some vibration. And the easiest thing to do is be able to pull that screw up a bit more by putting a washer in. That was rather simple uh, to take care of in that manner. But getting on with it, uh, the resistor here that read around uh, 14K instead of 10K was way too low. But it wasn't easy as all that. You have to keep in mind the existing line voltages of today. I had to make a couple of compromises when I did this. And what happened was, as I go to my sheet, when I look at, at this, the, the original one was uh, 1386, and it was way too low. And excuse us, because the swap says 1300 on the swap, it was actually 1280. I just rounded up. But the uh, the voltages were way too low, even for um, today's line voltages, or, or there and about. And... The one I had originally put in its replacement was actually a 980, but the problem with the 980 was, was that it was it was too low of a resistance and it made the voltages way too high, as you can see annotated in blue. So I had to go through the resistors that I had received and I found one that was 1280 that sat somewhere in the middle between the two and then I had to pop that one in. And when I put that one in, that was a nice compromise between the two resistors and that gave me the voltages that I was looking for. And once I was able to get those rails set up just right, I was able to, to lock down those voltages on, on B, C, and D right there. And I'll be able to further test uh, throughout the rest of the amplifier and replace the rest of the resistors that need replacing. We have the amp and the rest in position, uh, disconnected. Everything turned down, all the volumes turned down. Nothing special is activated. We're going to let it come up measure our tubes one by one see what we got our first one is in place here we'll take those values and record it on the sheet shut down the amp move to the next tube once we have those values we'll record it in our permanent record for this amplifier now that we have some uh, stable plate voltage uh, we've been able to take a look at the current flow here and uh, what we're seeing is interesting uh, we're seeing that um, the right tube is, is around the expected value. They're running a, a little bit light. You know, maybe maybe I have to uh, uh, work on that bias just a little bit. But not far off. 28 milliamps is, is in and around what I would expect for 6V6 running in this application. Left one, 11.8 milliamps. Left one's running real cold. But looking at uh, some of the other values and the work that's been done, uh, everything seemed right, of course, to prove this claim, swap the sockets and retest, and sure enough, right to left shows 28 again, so uh, the tube follows the issue. Left to right, 11.9, the tube follows the issue. RCA tube is bad. RCA tube is, is not pumping out what we want it to. We're going to have to replace that with another 6V6 and match that in this uh, application here, so another find for this amplifier. Is going to be to put in a, another final tube there. So this is bringing back to our schematic here. You know, balance these 6v6s here. So definitely going to have to do that. <clears throat> and this is the kind of stuff we find towards the end of, of our testing here because this amplifier, you know, is now, you know, approaching its final phase of testing. Uh, this is the things we're discovering. So, yeah, get, get some good tubes in here now. Now that all the resistor work had been done, the amplifier had been carefully, carefully inspected. What I do is this. I hook up the amplifier to a variac, and the reason I do this is I want to find out the rectifier voltage right here off this GZ34 and match it as close as possible to what we'd be receiving off this red wire here, which is 420 volts. Let me bring that back in focus right here. <coughs> the reason I do this is to give me some sort of ballpark to work with for the rest of my values. And you know the red and the blue is the is the original bads, the corrections, the work throughs that were done. And then finally the green is, is the results. Now I'm not going to go through every single one of them right here. But this amplifier came out absolutely phenomenal. The values that I was looking for. You know, considering this is plus or minus 20% and the air conditioner fluctuations I had to deal with. Seeing values in and around 3%, 5% fluctuation. I was very happy with this. Uh, after that, while the amp was running, we did a test where 
tapped on the components with nylon, made sure that there were no components that were causing any issues. And then finally, a full functional test will be underway to see how the amp performs. Once we have the correct tube in place, we'll be coming back to this circuit right here, which I did modify both with the resistor and the capacitor. I have checked this, of course, obviously. I didn't just haphazardly turn this amplifier on. It still sits around 34 volts right here, but we're not tuning for 34 volts. It's just a, a guidance. What we're really tuning for is current, right? Obviously, I can't tune for current with, with an imbalance like this. This is just um, this is just foolish at this point to, to try and attempt something like this. I'm going to leave it alone. We're going we're gonna to get a matched set of 6v6s or a much closer set of 6v6s. And then we'll, we're, we're going to come back here and, and, and use this uh, NEG35 as a guidance and, and try and bring this in closer. So I'm going to uh, go down and get a hold of some of those and, and, and revisit this, this bias circuit for the last time. Get our final assembly of this amplifier back together for its final testing and then bring it in for uh, the professional ear to listen to it and, and see what it's got. You know, we're going to stress test it and... and see if we've got what we're looking for another problem with the circuit shows um the b voltage right here going to the 12ax7 which is 423 volts comes through a 10 meg ohm resistor to become 345 clearly this is not correct and this 100k and this 10 meg resistor are are reversed which means that some of these readings here are suspect looking at the values on here we see that it is also incorrect um, the volt, the values that I use here, uh, starting with 423, a known value, and then looking at it as the actual values in place, and this one does show the correct values in place, shows 410 on the 100 drop and 360 on the 220 drop to be correct values, and those are the ones I went with to validate the 12AX7. So that looks good to me, and this particular circuit functions flawlessly, so we're going to call that good. The other values on the tube do read correctly. As we were finishing some bench trials, I noticed some hum uh, when turning up the volume in normal mode. It turned out to be that uh, one of the wires came loose on the pad here. One of the final capacitors had to bring that up, make sure that was secure and bring it down. What I also found in testing was that this uh, resistor right here was quite microphonic, uh, really microphonic. It was probably due to the excessive wire pressure here. Better safe than sorry, I went and replaced that resistor. Another one, I pulled a sheet to remember which one it was. I know it was in the uh, the reverb circuit, the 2200. This one was really tough to find, and, and out of all the circuits I hate, <clears throat> I hate these the most. This 2200 is bias resistor, and this carbon one was causing some crackling and lightning in the circuit. Really tough to find this stuff. When, when you get down to this, this is that, that, that transient sound that you hear that, that comes every so often. If you sit there and wait long enough, you'll, you'll always find stuff like this in, in the carbon resistors. But this one was more pronounced. It took um, extensive troubleshooting and taking apart the, uh, the circuits of this amp to find that it was in the reverb. But I did eventually end up swapping out that resistor. And that was the... Um, uh, 2200 right here not that the voltage was was terribly off I mean not that the resistance was terribly off within a value you know I think it was it was around 23 but it was a noisy uh, uh, resistor so it was causing some some val uh, problems on the amplifier which I found strange because you would think what reverb turned down and the tank disconnected that it wouldn't feed back into the circuit but somehow it did and that was greatly alleviated by replacing that so I think I got it all um, I didn't replace every resistor in the circuit, so you're still going to find uh, some weird things now and again. And then I polished up all the uh, the connectors here, the grounding out points on these connectors. I think we're all set. We're finally going to put this amp together and test it out. Okay, now it's time to run the amplifier through its paces. Uh, we got it on the vibrato right now. On the vibrato side, we're not going to be testing vibrato and setting up the pedal. Um, what we will be doing is trying out the reverb. Right now we got reverb down to one, so we're setting it for regular, so we just have travel and bass set halfway.
reverb to five. Nice echo. Crank reverb up to ten. That's a lot of reverb. to our normal normal jack here give it some treble and bass Sounds good. Uh, no audible hum. Don't hear any artifacts. There was a, a, a lot of work to be done on on the reverb too. What we had was we're having some issues again in the reverb. So my my pickups are picking up into the microphone here. On the reverb circuit, I found another. Um, uh, crunchy uh, uh, resistor. I don't know if I'd mentioned that. This was causing all sorts of hellacious troubleshooting issues, and that was repaired. So everything's fine now. This one is done. Uh, final balance of the tubes came out to a pair that read 24 and 26 milliamps, respectively. Once I had that down, I did my rebiasing, brought us up to 29.5 to uh, it was like 31.8. Uh, that became the final uh, finals uh, current for this amplifier. So this is done, the Fender Deluxe Reverb AB763. Thank you, everybody, for watching.